Hello and welcome again to Nomad's World Minecraft. Uh, today we are going to show the uh, villager trading system. Uh, first thing we need to do is start with what kind of villagers we have. Uh, there are five different color um, villagers. There is the brown robe, the white robe, purple robe, the black apron. Come on, turn around, buddy cameras on you and let's there it is black black apron and white apron okay so three robes two aprons uh, each of them have different classes so like this guy here he's a farmer this guy is a fisherman shepherd and a Fletcher okay the white robes have the librarian, the cartographer. Purple robe only has a cleric. The black robes are armorer, weaponsmith, the toolsmith. Okay, and the white robes are butcher and the leather worker. All right, so we have five different color uh, clothing on the villagers and each of them have different classes so we've got four six seven ten twelve total classes in the Java version there is also a green robe uh, that has uh, it, that one's called the nitwit uh, he has no trades now I'm not certain I've never seen one in the bedrock edition so I am assuming that that is a Java only um, and I have seen in some videos recently some nitwits so I'm assuming that that is still in uh, the Java version but bedrock I am pretty certain that there are no nitwits no green robes in this uh, version uh, that may be added later I don't know um, so let's start with trades. Uh, first of all, the farmer starts with wheat, uh, or he, he's, he'll buy wheat, potatoes, carrots, and he will sell bread. Um, we are going to, I'm going to show you what their final trades are. Uh, I'll show you what they start with and then we'll I'll maximize their uh, what their trades are the fisherman he has uh, if you give him fish and an emerald he'll give you cooked fish you give him string he'll give you emerald uh, coal he'll give you an emerald that's his starting the shepherd give him wool he'll give you an emerald you give him emeralds he'll give you a pair of shears the Fletcher you give him string he'll give you an emerald uh, give him emerald to give you arrows so those are just the starting ones alright and the numbers don't mean anything alright uh, in terms of uh, it's random uh, there's no set number uh, like for instance the fish the uh, farmer he ha he says 21 his quantity can be anywhere from 18 to 22 the potatoes can be anywhere from 15 to 19 and the potatoes can be anywhere from 15 to 19 so in this case the carrots is the best it can be because it's the fewest number of carrots that you're giving him to get the emerald if it was you know something like this 21 well 18 to 22 so he's not a very good one for giving wheat so um, and like the fisherman, uh, this one, tier one, okay, uh, if you, it's always, uh, he's selling cooked fish for this, so this is, um, this won't change. Uh, but something like this give him 17 string he'll give you one emerald his quantity is 15 to 20 so again a random number 
uh, the lower the number, the better, because you know you, you save your resources, you can make more trades. Uh, let's look at the shepherd. The shepherd will uh, that is sixteen to twenty-two, so he's that's not a very good deal. And the shears we can make those. So um, the ones I tend to to uh, that that counts for all of them. All right, S like that they'll they'll sell you an emerald for a variety of of uh, uh, items so like the librarian uh, I've got the uh, Wikipedia over here on my other computer the Wikipedia says 24 to 36 so this is not a bad deal because this is really low now if I found one that was 24 then obviously that would be really awesome but for the librarians it's not so much about the paper as much as it is the books all right um, because honestly when it comes to making emeralds the farmer is the best all right because you have wheat you have potatoes and you have carrots that you can sell to him and to get the emeralds and then it's like if this one uh, let's show this um, wheat Potatoes. Carrots. All right, so if we go in here, and we'll probably have to get some more because he's going to lock us out. Um, so we can put this in here, and we could get an emerald, get another emerald, get another emerald. All right. Now, eventually, this will lock out. Let's get some more wheat. Now, the first trade you make. Did you see the swirlies? Let's do another one. Um, let's do some string. Okay. Go to string. And if we do one trade, okay, we only did 17, and we escape, he will get these little swirlies. That means he's leveling up, and he's opening up some more trades. All right. So originally, uh, let's see, brown robe, fisherman. Originally, he had string, he had coal and he would do cooked fish. That was tier one trades. Okay, now he should be unlocked to tier two. And if you give him seven emeralds, he will give you a fishing rod that is enchanted. Now the enchants on any of these trades with the fisherman, the toolsmith, the armorer, and the weaponsmith, those will be random on the enchants. There's an equal chance on any of them. So it opened up tier two, and he's willing to sell you a fishing rod of unbreaking one. That's pretty good. Um, that is uh, the unbreaking. I'm not so concerned about, but the Severn he he'll sell you the enchanted fishing rod for seven to eight emeralds. So this is the lowest. So you, you save your emeralds. Um, obviously, you can make a fishing rod. You can take a book or something and enchant that fishing rod with whatever you want. So this uh, I tend to not use fishermen. Um, so let's go back to the farmer. Uh, we're going to shift and click. That gives us three because we can get three trades out of that still hasn't locked us out let's do another one there we go so he did one trade that time put that there so we are now locked out of doing the wheat trades we got eight emeralds 
um, seven of them from him, one from the fisherman. Now, uh, if we escape, maybe he'll level up again. Yep. Okay, so he's done two level ups. So he is now on tier three. The bread, okay. Tier two for the farmer is pumpkins, and he will sell you pumpkin pie for an emerald. And melons, that's tier three, and he will sell you apples. And the farmer actually has one more tier. Let's see if we can, um, I'll show you how this works. In order to, it says trade something else to unlock. So we're gonna trade him some potatoes. We'll do one at a time. And see if we can get him to, to uh, there he goes. That was lucky. A lot of times it takes several. Um, sometimes I've had this one and this one locked out and I've had to go to carrots and finally it'll unlock. Now, is when I traded him potatoes and escape and he leveled up, that unlocked any trades that were locked, okay? Uh, if I, Let's say he can do, you know, six trades before he locks up. It's it's a random number, but um, if he could do six and we did five, and then we went over here and did a trade and he leveled up, it's not going to reset this one. It's only going to reset the ones that are locked. If so, if both of these were locked, let's go in here. Okay, we've got that one locked, and let's go in here, and we need some more potatoes. Let's get some more carrots while we're at it. Okay, so that one's locked. Get this one to lock up. There we go. So both the potatoes and the wheat are locked in, or locked up. And so we'll go to the carrots. We'll do one trade at a time. Okay. Let's see if we can get him. There he goes. And both the wheat and the potatoes are now unlocked. So this is a great way to get your emeralds is the farmer okay he is by far the the best because uh, you can set up automated or semi-automated farms for carrots and potatoes and wheat and gain those resources very quickly um, another one another farm to do is the sugar cane because you can get paper uh, from the sugar cane and you're going to want to use that for the librarian for, to get the books. All right, so this unlocked tier four, which was cookies. He'll give you a cookie, a cake, and that's it on the uh, tier four. So farmers can go up to tier four. Fishermen have two tiers, which we've already done. The shepherd, uh, they have two tiers. The Fletcher, that's uh, this guy back here, he has two tiers. So they each have a different number of tiers, with the Librarian having six, the Cartographer having four, the Cleric, which is the purple robe, has four, uh, Armorer has four, Weaponsmith has three, Toolsmith has three, Butcher has two, and Leather Worker has three. So we're not going to worry about the individual tiers, but uh, the librarian is the one that has the six tiers. Everybody else has less than that. Um, so uh, we've touched on how to trade. Uh, and if you, of course, go in and uh, you wanted to purchase some bread, you know, you could go in here and boom, 14. There we go. And it locked that out. So. Uh, you would have to go back in and 
do some other trades. So uh, let's get rid of some inventory here. Um, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Wish I had those slimes in the main. Keep that. And um, we're going to show you the librarian. Librarian's the main one. That's the one I'm really interested in the most. Uh, we'll keep all that. And we want paper. Get a bunch of paper. And uh, we'll get some books and emeralds. Uh, and emeralds there we go all right so um, the ones I use the most um, the librarian obviously because he gives you the enchanted books the farmer uh, to gain your emeralds um, the cartographer I you can use him to get some special maps uh, which is uh, can be handy um, I will probably do that in the main game uh, season one at some point but for now we're just focused on uh, some other stuff in in uh, mainly the getting our books later on we'll get some maps um, the cleric He's useful for a couple of things. Uh, if you're having trouble getting ender pearls from the Enderman, you can get ender pearls from him for uh, four to seven emeralds. He'll give you one ender pearl. All right. So it's kind of expensive, but if you you know if you need to get some ender pearls and you're having trouble. Uh, this can be a way of getting those. Um, the armorer, the weaponsmith, and the toolsmith, they're also kind of useful because you can get some enchanted equipment out of them, uh, which is can be handy at the beginning of the game. Uh, the first tier tends to be unenchanted equipment, which is basically... Well, the toolsmith has a shovel. Uh, unbreaking two for five emeralds. So uh, let's take a look at him. Uh, enchanted shovel for five to seven. So that's actually a pretty good deal. Um, if, if you have all your enchants all worked out already, then enchanted equipment isn't the issue. However, uh, the thing that is useful from these guys is their final tiers. Uh, let's see, the first one is the armorer. Uh, tier three, he will he will give you for for sixteen to nineteen emeralds. He will give you an enchanted diamond chest plate. So uh, now, granted, that would only be the chest plate. But it would be enchanted, and it would be random. But the thing that's useful for that is it's diamond. And if you're looking at your chest plate and you're going, hey, my, it's you know the durability is really low. I need to repair it. I can come over to this guy, do a trade with him, get a diamond chest plate, and then use that to repair mine. Uh, as long as I make sure that my enchants don't get all messed up. Uh, that's a, you know, an easy way to conserve the diamonds that you do have. Um, the Weaponsmith Tier 3, he has two diamond items. One is a sword and one is an axe. So those are useful because, again, you could do... Uh, you know, you could get a bunch of diamond axes and diamond swords and be able to use those for repairs. 
on your your main equipment uh, and then the toolsmith tier 3 is a diamond pickaxe so here's your pickaxe here's your axe your sword and your chest plate all in diamond all enchanted um, if your equipment's already enchanted maxed out on a chance then it should be just a repair tool for you so we'll end up getting some of these guys later on and then last is our white apron villagers these guys are about worthless to me uh, the white apron guy he has two tiers he will he will sell you emeralds for raw pork chops and raw chicken um, and uh, emerald for coal if you give him coal he'll give you an emerald and in exchange his cells are cooked pork chops and cooked chicken so uh, this might be a way to get some emeralds but the farmer is far superior in that regard because you don't have to deal with uh, growing items and then using those items to raise the pigs and chickens to kill to do trades with him so stick with the farmer on him so this guy we don't even care about uh, the leather worker if you give him leather 9 to 12 of them he'll give you one emerald that's pretty expensive for um, resources because uh, we want our leather for other things uh, in exchange his cells are leather pants um, for three emeralds well I can use my leather and make them you know and save my emeralds so um, and then tier two is an enchanted leather tunic which is the chest plate piece uh, but we use diamond so that's better than the leather so not much use there and saddles which we can also make out of leather ourselves so um, yeah these guys are pretty pointless um, let's talk about the oh, we've already talked about these guys these guys are pretty useful for the diamond items for repairs uh, so it's if you uh, do trades with these guys and you find that one is a little bit high on um, on how much uh, emeralds then you can uh, you know keep trying to get more villagers like these guys and work those in, uh, those trades down to more favorable uh, the cleric this guy is kind of useful um, his first tier is uh, rotting flesh and he'll give you an emerald if you save all your rotting flesh throughout your playtime uh, this can be a useful way to get a few emeralds um, he also will give you an emerald if you give him eight gold is that an eight I think that's an eight uh, yep eight gold ingots I would never do that uh, gold is too valuable to me so uh, the rotting flesh is one way of getting rid of the rotten flesh and getting something out of it alright so that's that's one use of the clerics however eventually he's gonna lock up or lock this one out and then you would be having to resort to let's do Rotting flesh. So if we go here, get an emerald, level him up, and the first trade you make with him is going to level him up to tier two. But past that, it's going to be kind of random. So you got to make sure you're keeping them. Anytime you lock something up, do something to unlock them. All right, tier two. He, for one emerald, he'll give you three redstone. Now that can be anywhere from one to four redstone. All right, so that's a random number. Uh, so this isn't too bad. Uh, redstone's pretty easy to get, though, f when you're mining. Uh, especially if you have uh, fortune on your pickaxe. Yeah, you can get a lot of redstone real fast. Um, lapis. 
that will be 1 to 2 lapis. Uh, in this case, it's not, yeah, it's only 1, so this is a good trade to me. Um, let's go back. And 36 rotten flesh. That can be anywhere from 36 to 40, so he's got a good trade for the uh, rotting flesh at least. And see if he levels up. Nope. Try it again. And I do one trade at a time. Hit escape. Try and get him to level up. There's uh, supposedly if you do multiple trades, like if I was to do uh, two or three trades, like do this one, and go in here and do this one, that's considered two trades. All right. And if you do, I th it's supposed to be like a 20% chance. So um, with one trade, it's 25% chance, or 20% chance. If you do two trades, it's obviously 40%. So if you do five trades with him and then escape, he should level up. However, I haven't found that to always be true. Um, I've, and also doing single trades at a time you run the risk, you know, it's 20%, and I don't think that that is cumulative. So if I do a trade, escape, he doesn't level up, do another one, that doesn't mean he's getting an increased chance. It's just you have a 20% chance each trade for him to level up. So eventually you would get through to a level up, or he would lock it out. Um, so we're not going to keep trading with him. Uh, tier 3... He sells ender pearls and glowstone. Glowstone's kind of useful. Uh, it's a little block. Um, let's look at it. And also look at uh, enchant because we're gonna. This is also something he sells. So. Um, This is basically a light source, just like a torch. Uh, I can't remember what the what the difference in numbers are, um, but this is kind of an expensive way to light up a place because it uses up your glowstone. But it's kind of useful. It's it's uh, a colorful block that you can use to. Uh, light up your light up your base or anything else and um, as opposed to a torch you know which kind of occupies a space but it you can walk through it this you can't walk through it so this this is a good thing to put like in the ground or in the ceiling or something to light up what you want to but not take up space I have a tendency to be walking past and doing some mining out I'll, I'll break one of my torches so this is kind of useful, but again, it's a little bit of expensive um, use of glowstone. So it's all a matter of how much you have, you know, and and um, uh, this is obtainable through the nether. Uh, you can also get a little bit of glowstone dust uh, off of the witches. So, uh, but you can mine this out of the nether. Uh, the other item this guy sells on his fourth tier is the bottle of enchant enchanting. Okay, this doesn't have anything to do with enchanting itself. This is a um, if you throw it, you get some XP. All right, that's what it gets you. So. Uh, that's a way of get you know you can you can trade some emeralds and get some of these bottles of enchanting and they will give you X, XP which you can use to you know like level up your um, your uh, character level for for other enchants or for uh, doing repairs on any equipment that has mending um, I've heard that there's another use for for these but um let's look at it real quick um it can be thrown it'll give 
3 to 11 experience points. Um, yeah, it doesn't have any other uses other than that. Um, the obtaining is from villager clerics. Uh, doesn't look like you can craft these. So, um, again, not a real you know good use of your emeralds. But if you know if you've got tons of emeralds, big uh, from doing trades with the farmer, this could be a good way to you know you fill up a chest with a bunch of these. You can. Uh, get a decent number of uh, levels on your character um, the the one issue is that you know it's 3 to 11 experience points per orb okay so like that gave me three orbs so you know 3 to 11 so that could be 33 uh, points of experience but when it comes to uh, your level, that's not a whole lot. But when it comes to doing your uh, repairs, that might might be pretty useful. So take that into consideration. Um, you know, if you if you want to save up a bunch of them in your, in some chests and and have them for quick repairs of equipment, that's that's a that's a pretty good idea. Um, I tend to just build a farm that, you know, like a skeleton farm and use that for XP grinding. And, um, but, uh, that's, that's totally up to you. Um, the cartographer we talked about, uh, he has the, I'll go back on Wikipedia, uh, cartographer for paper and compass is what he sells on the various tiers. And he will give you tier three. He will give you an empty map. Yep, that's pretty worthless. I can take the paper and turn that into an empty map myself. Um, one thing to note is uh, if you make a map and you make a compass and you put them together, you can make a locator map, which basically is a is a map that. Uh, let's look at those. Map. Um, let's get rid of some stuff here. Uh, we don't need so much paper. Empty locator map. So, um, like that, like that. Get rid of some more paper. Get rid of some books and some string. We don't need that. Okay. Um, All right, so empty look. Uh, let's look at the map first. Okay, we used it, and as you, if you use it, notice number nine, uh, number eight. Okay, that's where it went. All right, so the blank map when we used it, um, it gave us a map that we can look at. All right. And as you can see, it shows where what we've explored. Now, the, uh, the little yellow dot, that's that glowstone block over there. The uh, brown spots, that's the fencing. If you go over here and break that, it'll update the map. Um, Got some little brown spots there that. Okay, so but the the one thing about this map is it doesn't show where you're at on here. Okay, um, so the other one is the empty locator map. If we click and use one of those and bring that up, now we can see where we're at, and it'll show us our orientation. So now if we go over to those brown spots. It should update those. Oh, okay. Those are brown spots from from uh, it's dirt instead of grass. See those? So, uh, and that's because of the animals. Now you can 
go off the map and it will just show where you're at so if I go like this and come back okay now if I use a another one oh no that went right so this was our first one and we'll, let's go off the map go this way a little ways okay and then we take another empty locator map and it looks like we've already been over in this area notice how it's all green on the map that shows that we've explored this so let's go a little ways and see if we can find an empty area it shouldn't I'm pretty sure I haven't gone too far away from where those villagers are okay get rid of that and we'll get rid of that one And I must have explored. It might be that because I'm in creative that it's just showing all of them as explored. But it would be the, the if you notice the, the brown color around the edge of the map, the whole map would be like that, except for where you've explored. And, and that's the fog of war. Um, once you've explored an area, it'll show you the some details on the map. But uh, otherwise, it's going to be kind of brownish, and uh, it will uh, the light brown. And as you explore an area, it'll take that fog of war away. Okay, so that's maps. Uh, let's get rid of all those maps. We're not concerned about. I don't really use maps. Um, they are kind of interesting to to. Uh, I keep picking it up. Uh, you can put them on a wall uh, in a in a um, uh, what's it called a item frame and that can be pretty useful uh, because you can put you know you can have a wall that has a map of your base and that can be kind of interesting to look at uh, there's a few other things you can do with them that's kind of interesting but uh, you can make copies of maps. You can take one map and make a copy of another map. And uh, so if you need multiple copies of the same map, um, then you can do you can do that. Um, you can also combine like uh, four. Uh, I think it's nine maps in a um, the crafting table you can combine nine of them together and it will reduce the scale uh, or increase the scale it'll make it'll make everything smaller and you'll have a single map that is uh, a co combination of all nine so it'll, it basically uh, you'll get a, a, a zoom out type effect um, so that's kind of interesting, also to to have something like that, because then you can you can go quite a ways out and have a map that shows uh, several types of maps that show different aspects of your base and your surrounding area. So we're going to take a look at the librarian. This is the important guy, okay? Um, the Fletcher um, to talk about the these guys. Um, the Fletcher, you can uh, get flint, uh, bows, and arrows from him, and you can sell him string. Not much use there. Uh, the Shepherd, you can get different colored wool. It's completely random. You can also get shears from him, and you can sell him wool. So, again, not, not really worth it. Um, not, not worth the, the use of your resources. Uh, the fisherman, you can sell him string and coal. You can get cooked fish or an enchanted fishing rod. Uh, again, not really all that worth it. The enchanted rod might be worth it f if you need to do repairs on your your main fishing pole. 
So that could be useful. Um, uh, so I would put him in the same category, I suppose, as the the uh, black apron guys, which is your armorer, weaponsmith, and your toolsmith. All right. So, uh, and then of course the farmer is, the, of course, the most important one for getting your emeralds. And then the second most important one is your librarian. So we have. Uh, Get an emerald from him. Let him trade up. All right. And let's take a look at what he's got. So we've got... We started with... Um, okay, tier one is the paper. You sell paper to him for an emerald. Uh, this is kind of like your go-to... Uh, because you can get lots of paper if you have your automated uh, sugarcane farm going pretty good so this is what I use to do trades with him to get him uh, all the way to tier six uh, he, you also start in tier one with he has one book available uh, in this case it's protection four which is not bad uh, 48 emeralds you can get that anywhere. I've heard that it's that it depends on the enchant, but it says five to sixty-four emeralds. Um, oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, so this is a level four protection. So level four is going to be anywhere from. 14 to 58 emeralds okay so if you're if you get a level one book it's going to be anywhere from 5 to 19 level 2 is 8 to 32 and it just keeps going up up to level 5 which is 17 to 71 um, uh, emeralds okay so uh, Definitely look up the Wikipedia for for your numbers, um, but basically what I do is when I, you know, let's say I had two librarians with protection four, but one has it for cheaper, then that's the one I would save. The other one might have a better book on one of the other tiers, though. So. You know, I take a look at all the enchants that they each have, and I, I just start making notes on paper, and and because uh, I end up with a lot of librarians, and uh, eventually I usually end up with one librarian for each book, that it has the lowest uh, emerald price, and then uh, any additional librarians that are of no use to me, I just get rid of, uh, maybe throw them back in the breeding. Uh, the the breeder, the village breeder, or uh, I just will let them loose and let the zombies get them. Um, so this is uh, f level 48, or level 4, I mean. And so this is a pretty high, because this one's 14 to, to 58. Um, now, level 5, it says 17 to 71. However, um the uh emerald cap is 64 because you can only get 64 emeralds in one stack so uh level five the maximum would be 64 emeralds there's also a note about um okay the books will only have one enchant the enchant is chosen randomly has an equal chance of any enchant type occurring an equal chance to get any level of it of it so higher level enchantments are as likely to be you can get the high level ones just as easily as the low ones okay it's all just a random number um, says the price in emeralds depends on enchantment level and treasure status the, uh, treasure and chance the price is doubled 
Um, I'm believing that to be fortune and looting uh, for the for the treasure status. Um, I don't think any of the other enchants have anything to do with uh, oh maybe luck of the sea also. So uh, there's only a few, but uh, I just keep you know getting librarians and and checking the status. Uh, what their numbers are and if it's a good librarian then you know I keep him and I get rid of the other one so uh, tier 2 uh, let's look at that where is he there he is okay uh, is a book uh, he sells uh, you sell him books for an emerald uh, he will sell you compass and bookcases all right so this can be one of your uh, methods for unlocking this one. All right. Um, then if we go and let's do a couple of trades, see if you'll unlock. And always give him a chance to. There he goes. G give him a moment, because sometimes it takes a moment for the game to say, "Okay, he's leveling up." Now, another thing to note is when you go in here, sometimes you get back in here real quick, and he's just leveled up, but it's not showing you the next tier. Just escape and go back in. All right. Sometimes it glitches. Uh, I think one of the last patches fixed the issue, but uh, he used to used to have to go in, go out, go back in, and it would refresh uh, refresh his trades. Um, so tier three, he'll sell you a clock or glass. This is another one I use for uh, r unlocking the paper one, uh, and supposed to be a written book but I don't see that so uh, that's probably something that they removed um, so a clock and glass this is the a good one because I can always use more glass and it's only one emerald um, and the glass can be three to five uh, not that I really care but because um, I'm always just trying to unlock this all right so let's go back that was tier three let's go in and work on oh we locked it out all right what do we level up nope all right so we're going to go to the glass one and do one trade and cool he upgraded all right so i unlocked my paper again and gave us tier four, which is the next book. Thorns two for 15. Okay, I don't really care about thorns too much, but it is something I use a little bit. And we'll go back. Let's start working on getting them to level up to level five. Let's do a few trades here. Come on, buddy. Upgrade. There it goes. All right. So, tier five. There's the thorns. The next book is Silk Touch One for ten. All right, there's another one that I don't really use a whole lot of, but it can be useful. Uh, a lot of people, uh, they use when you're mining and you come up to uh, stone, you know, you're, you're mining the stone, and you get, oop, no, I don't want that. Uh, where's regular cobblestone? Okay, so you have... 
regular stone, you know, and you know, dirt and granite and all that stuff, and you're mining through this, and what you'll get from it is cobblestone. Well, some people like to build out of regular stone, so they'll take their cobblestone and they'll smelt it down and make regular stone, but, but that's using up your coal. But if you have a uh, pickaxe with silk touch on it, you will actually get stone, and which you can then turn into, you know, like stone bricks and whatnot. So you'll actually get this block. So it saves your coal, uh, or coal or charcoal, and uh, a lot of people just they they hate the look of this cob cobblestone block. I personally, I'm. I don't care you know to me yeah if I had if if this broke to into this automatically just like granite and all that then I that's what I would be building out of just a gray block this is what I'm getting when I'm mining with my regular pickaxes so that's what I tend to build out of because it's the most common block um, available so um, Silk Touch. Now he can do one more tier up to tier six. So we're gonna unlock that. Is he gonna upgrade for me? Yes, he did. Nice. Sometimes I get lucky and sometimes I don't. So the last tier is uh, name tags uh, for 20 to 22. Okay. 20 to 22 is the range so this is a good deal for name tags name tags are very useful if you have uh, some uh, specific animals that you don't want to just despawn you put a name tag on them you can name them whatever you want and uh, then they will not despawn they are considered a basically a pet and um, or, or something like that. It, it just they they won't despawn. And um, now, like my cow farm that I have, uh, the cows in there are not don't have name tags on them. If I if my game crashes, I have an, a chance that it will despawn some of my cows. I've also crashed before and had them fall through the trap door area. Uh, you know when it's open and that creates a big headache so name tags are a good way to keep your animals from despawning but I don't tend to use them uh, they just ha I just don't really have a use for it uh, one thing you can do according to the Wikipedia is if you put a name tag on a sheep and excuse me and you name it Jeb I'm guessing Jeb was a developer in uh, for Minecraft in the early days. I don't know if he's still around, but you name one of the sheep Jeb. Supposedly, its fur or its its uh, wool will change colors, so it'll go through the entire spectrum, which can be kind of interesting to look at. I don't know what it, what color fur it or uh, wool it will drop when you shear it, but uh, supposedly it it will rotate colors and uh, so we'll probably do that at some point just just for the giggles um, just to have one wandering around in there in that room um, so that's pretty much it for villager trading uh, again I use the uh, farmer mostly to get my emeralds the fisherman the and the black robe guys for doing repairs. Uh, I usually use this guy, you know, trade him a bunch of of rotting flesh, and then I just get rid of him. When he when he locks out, I just get rid of him uh, because I have no real use for any of the other stuff. Um, getting a few uh, ender pearls might be useful. Uh, or the uh, bottles of enchantment it's really up to you um, I tend to get a few pearls out of him you know get 
maybe 10 saved up. Uh, ender pearls I don't typically use for anything other than locating the end fortress. Um, and once I've located it, then I don't even use them anymore. So, um, and then the other useful to me is uh, this guy gives you some maps that, you know, will locate the, uh, the what is it, the Redstone Mansion. Uh, it's called the Woodland Explorer map, which uh, basically is a map that points you to the, um, to a, 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 a Redstone Mansion. And then the Ocean Explorer, which points you to an Ocean Monument. Now, Ocean Monuments really aren't that difficult to find. You just get out there and um, either run around with Frostwalker on your boots or in a boat. And, you know, you just get out there and you wander around. You'll, you'll find an Ocean Monument. So, uh, but this could be a, a useful way to find the closest one. Uh, and then you can utilize that ocean monument to make yourself a, a like a um, guardian farm um, which is the m fish that s the little spiny fish that spawn in the ocean monument um, but these two right here by far are the first ones that I worry about uh, if I find some of these guys or fishermen yeah, my uh, the fisherman. I don't even hardly do any fishing, so, uh, but it, it you know he can be useful, but these two guys, you know, one or two of these guys and lots of these guys. That's that's my goal. All right, so that's going to do it for this tutorial video, and uh, please check in my main game. It'll be uh, level or uh, episode fifteen sixteen that I've done so far. And uh, 15 was kind of like uh, putting the villager breeder together and whatnot and having a little issue. Level uh, Episode 16, I had it working and I'm starting to move the villagers over to the where they're going to basically be in little corrals. And uh, that way I can start going through and, and trading them up to their tiers and find find out what books they've got and uh, start getting getting that organized and then we can start uh, getting our emeralds uh, which is going to take a bunch of food and use those emeralds and the books to get ourselves some good enchants on our equipment and we'll probably save up a few extra books and just in case and um, and then we'll go from there once we've got some good enchants we'll be able to really knock out some projects at that point uh, so if you like this video please be sure to like subscribe and share please give me a comment on anything that I missed and I'll catch you back in the regular series thank you